Hey guys, Tim here with Solo Hunter and Hunting House Archery Shop. Today I wanted to do a quick overview of the 2022 Prime Inline Bows. A little bit late getting this out, but to me it's not late because I wanted to be able to spend as much time as I could shooting each bow, uh, comparing it to last year's models, comparing it to some of the other manufacturers and other brands, educating myself on the system, how it works, why it works, um, and why, why Prime decided to make some of the changes that they did. And then in this overview, I'll kind of go over some of the old cam systems because that's really the only thing that they changed from last year to this year is generally the cam system and the cables and string. And so I've got a few of those laid out here that I'll go over those. As far as the riser goes, same as last year's model, the Nexus um, differences in is in the axle to axle length. Nexus was two, two, four, and six. The inline is one, three, and five. Uh, same nano grip technology to keep the, the grip warm. It really does work. I was a skeptic at first, but cold aluminum is definitely a lot colder than, than the nano grip. So, all right, we'll jump right into the cam. The earliest cam that I have is a PCX cam from uh, Prime Rise, very similar to their first ones. Prime was the first ones to come out with a parallel cam design. A lot of people thought, oh, what do you do with those two cams? Well, it's, it's one cam. For those of you that don't know or didn't know, it is one cam, one solid cam with two tracks. Parallel cam system, parallel track. The idea behind that, and again, I'm not an engineer. I'm just a hunter. So the, the theory behind that was to stabilize the cam at draw to help eliminate cam lean. So as you're drawing the bow, the cam going this way, which then affects the knock travel, which is the consistency of the knock when the bow is from static to full draw and then back to release. So if you have a cam that's wobbling and doing this, you've got a knock that's doing this. If you've got a knock doing that, you've got an arrow doing that. And so this helped eliminate some of that. It also uh, gave the bow a really steady hold at full draw because you're pulling at two points on the top and the bottom each instead of just one point, and so there's, I felt like it gave, gave some really good stability. Uh, the next year's model is cam. This is a Synergy cam, so the only changes from this, from the Rise, was that's when they went to the Synergy grip technology, which is they raised the grip from being lower in the bow to more centered in the bow. You know, typically and traditionally, the burger hole, or burger button, as some might call it, was generally the center part of the bow. Um, with the Aero Prime, moved the grip up, which kind of followed kind of a traditional shooter's mentality where the higher you could get your grip in, and the closer to center in, in a long bow or a recurve, and also the closer you could get that arrow or the shelf of the arrow to your hand, the more stability you were gonna have. And theoretically, the more accuracy that you'd have. So that's when they changed those. The size of the cams changed, the top cam was larger than the bottom cam. So they, they had to do that in order to keep the timing correct with the bow. But again, one cam parallel system. The cam that I really enjoyed and really liked, this is when they went to a split cam bow uh, in the Logic and in the Synergy series. They went to two, uh, excuse me, split limb bow. Uh, two limbs instead of one solid limb. This ran in between it, but they were able to make the cam a little bit wider, which I really liked. I felt like that bow was super, super steady in hand and at full draw. And there's a reason why I shot that bow for three consecutive seasons. Um, wider track. The downside to that is, is with a little bit wider, um, it's, it had a little bit more vibration and also had a little bit more noise to it. But from an accuracy standpoint, that bow was rock solid. Absolutely loved it. And it also had a limb stop capable or a cable stop, depending on how you like your, your back wall. Some like it a little squishy, some like it rock hard. Then they went to similar cam, same cam, same parallel cam, but this one was modular. This was in the black series in 2020, 2020 and it was adjustable to multiple draw lengths. So now from uh, being a new shop owner and a new technician and, and um, a sellability standpoint, that was, that was brilliant. Just a lot of the other manufacturers carried that same thing where they might have had one or two different cam systems that were, that were modular to adjust to a draw length. Up until this point, all of Prime's were draw length specific on their cams, which personally I feel like were more efficient 
you can really fine tune the cam system to that specific draw length. So a shorter guy to a taller guy and anywhere in between, you had the most efficient um, cam possible. I think sometime down the road, maybe some of the manufacturers will go back to a, a draw length specific cam. Last year's model, the Nexus, same thing. They did adjust some of the cam a little bit to help get rid of a little bit more of that vibration and noise. I think the Nexus was a great bow, outstanding shooting bow. Very stable, very dead in hand. Um, really was an, an awesome bow. You could, it had a limb stop, or excuse me, a cable stop, draw stop, but you could really fine tune your let off in this bow, which I really liked. I like to get my bows to a specific length. I like those bows to really jump off the string. Um, I'm not a professional shooter. I'm just a guy that shoots stuff. Now, the inline cam. Wasted enough time on that to jump to what their differences are from this to this. Prime built itself on parallel cam technology. Then they added the Synergy grip technology, which is still here, hasn't gone away. Um, the differences here are, it's a modular cam system in a single track cam system, which acts like a parallel, parallel cam system without any of the negatives. It just has more positives. So in order to do that, they've got this diagram, and you've all probably seen it, or many of you have seen it. When this bow is in static position, or any bow is in static position that doesn't have a yoke system, yoke system being either a yoke on either side of the cam to keep that cam balanced, or on either side of the limb to keep that, the cam balanced, that would be a yoke system. A cam system without that, where did that cam go? It's going to have the cables on one side, of the, one side of the cam. What they've done to keep this cam stable is that draw, as you're drawing the bow back, the tracks for these cables fall more in line with the cam and keeping that cam straight, keeping that cam flat uh, at draw, um, helping to eliminate knock cam lean and knock travel. Um, so they've been able to do that in a single, single cam system. The beauty of this versus a yoke system, and again, hunter, not engineer, no scientist here. I like that because there's less going on. There's less strings. Um, I've been in a situation where I've been on a stock and I've stuck a particular a, a bow down and I've nicked the, the cables or the yoke system on there. Um, it's not a happy thing to have happen. As a hunter, there's less chance of that happening here. You've got a lot more you know, freedom here. There's less that can go on if you're laying that bow as you're crawling or sneaking across. From a, from a hunter standpoint, I really like that. From a shooter standpoint, between the technology of the Synergy Grip and that cam, I feel like this bow holds more steady at full draw than the Nexus does. I haven't done anything under slow motion. I haven't done any scientific or you know, engineering tests or any of that kind of thing. It's just strictly tests as a human being shooting a bow, which is what I am. So cam system, very simple. It adjusts to multiple draw lengths, locks in with a pin, loosens with two torque screws, sets in there really nicely. From a shop standpoint, that's, it's brilliant with all the manufacturers because I can fit anyone to this bow from here to here. More, most of them are here to here. Um, so a um, little bit about the bows. Let me open up this brochure because I don't memorize anything. 31 inch axle to axle on the inline one. You're looking at 332 feet per second with a seven inch brace height. Very forgiving for a short axle to axle bow. A lot of guys really like that, that like to get into squirrely situations, you know, and really really be light and, and fast. Bow weigh, that bow weighs about 4.3 pounds. The inline three, 33 inches axle to axle. You're looking at 337 feet per second IBO and six and a half inch brace height. Really nice compact bow. I had, I had a hard time going between this and the, and the five trying to decide which one. I finally settled on the five for me personally. This is not my personal bow, but uh, one of our demo bows. This bow is 35 inches axle to axle, 343 feet per second, which is really clipping, and you've got a six inch brace height. 
even though it's got a shorter brace height, it is a longer axle axle bow. Um, holds really, really well. To me, it's the most stable. And from, from my style of shooting, I've been the most accurate with the inline five. Um, on our shop bows, you can see we've got the ham skis on those because we really wanted guys to be able to feel what this bow should be set up as. And then also, Prime has a piece that snaps over this axle cap that you can tie your cables to or your your cord, your drop cord to. It's really effective, works really well. We've been tying them to the inside. Again, I'm a hunter first. I like to have that, that uh, cord tighter to the bow. It actually sets underneath my quiver instead of hitting my quiver, causing more noise in my vibration. It also gives me the ability, we kind of found the sweet spot on the limb to allow the drop of this rest, you know, to drop at the speed that I wanted to for the for the best tuning. So that's why we've run them to the inside of the cam there, or limb there. Some other guys might do it differently. That's fine. There's no right or wrong way. Well, actually there is some wrong ways, but there's a lot of right ways to do it. Uh, really like this bow, shoots really well. Um, now from a shop standpoint or a technician standpoint, summarizing up, uh, you know, kind of what these bows are, They've been fairly easy to tune. We do end up running these bows with a little bit stiffer of a shaft on the arrows. They really like to run with a stiff shaft. Uh, who doesn't? Um, and then also we're running them about 16th to an eighth knock high. One last thing, the shim system, very similar to last year. They give you a lot of room to move the cam right or left instead of you don't necessarily have to take out the axle to adjust those shims. They've got a horseshoe or a cutout there. I don't know if you can see that there. I'll, I'll do some close-ups where you could actually put this in the press, ease the pressure a little bit and pop these out to put in a different size shim if you got to move the cams one way or the other, uh, which is typical in tuning a bow, most bows, because every shooter is different. And once you get this rest at center shot and through the burger and where you want it, don't touch it. Just leave it there, make any of your other adjustments with, with the string. Move your string right or left rather than the, than the rest right or left. Okay, if you got any other questions, ask somebody smarter than me. And if you have any interest in the shop, we're in Reno, Nevada. It's Solo Hunter or Hunting House. You can look us up online at solohunter.com. We have tons of accessories, tons of bows. We have closeout bows that we can ship, accessories that we can ship, arrows that we can ship. And we're just a full on setup hunting pro shop.